yeah uh, thanks sam so uh okay hi everyone um, i'm patrick and i'm going to share my solution for jury search crypto forecasting competition okay uh, okay so let me just uh, first briefly introduce myself um, I participated in Cargo five years ago, and currently I'm a Cargo Competitions Master with uh, four gold medals. Most of them are time series competitions, and two of them are solo gold, including the G Research Crypto Forecasting Competition. Also, I have uh, 10 silver medals in different fields, such as uh, NLP and computer vision. Um, yeah, uh, this is the final leaderboard of the jury search crypto forecasting competition. I got a seventh place in the private leaderboard, and my solution is a, a deep learning model. Uh, with Patrick, very, yep, yep. I think your screen is not refreshing, or at least. Oh, okay. Uh, let me try again. Yeah, can yeah. you see it well? Yeah, we can see the leaderboard now. And you're okay, perfect. Place. Yep. So, so yeah, this is my profile. So yeah, uh, I have four gold medals here, and yeah, this is the final leaderboard of the competition. So I got seven places here, and my solution is a deep learning model with very little uh, features engineering, and and no no domain knowledge is required for my solution. So this competition is a two-stage uh, competition. The first stage is a three-month uh, long training phase. And the second stage is a three-month long uh, evaluation phase. So we cannot uh, retrain the model after the first stage. And the inference code will be fixed uh, and run uh, automatically in the second stage with real market data. Um, in this competition, we are given we are given the uh, minutes bar data of uh, fourteen uh, crypto assets from January uh, twenty eighteen to January twenty twenty two. So it covers uh, popular assets such as uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Dogecoin, and the host provide the the weight um, for each asset, which which will be used for uh, evaluation and target construction. The graph on the right hand side shows the price of Bitcoin in the training data. As you can see, the, the distribution changed a lot after 2021. And this could be challenging for us to build a machine learning model. Um, yeah, uh, these are the raw features of the mini bar data. So we are given the timestamp, the, the, the access ID. Some common uh, price data such as count, open, high, low, close, uh, volume, and the uh, uh, volume weight average price. Also, we are given the targets in the training data, which is a 15-minute uh, residualized return. And this is the column we need to predict in this competition. Um, yeah, these are the details to construct the targets. So, so crypto assets and uh, return are, are highly correlated, following a large extent to overall um, crypto market. So the host is more interested in predicting the returns for individual assets. So they try to remove the market signal from individual assets. So, so here they um, first they uh, calculate the log returns over 15 minutes. And, and to compute the um, market signal, we, we have to uh, calculate the weight average market return. Then we fit a, a simple linear regression by using the data in the most uh, recently 3,715 minutes. And this is the uh, evaluation metric used in, in this uh, competition, which is a weight, weight uh, Pearson correlation coefficient. And here is the equation. So you can see this is very similar to, to a, a Pearson correlation, but with a weight average and different weight for, for different sample. Okay, and now I'm going to talk about the details of my solution. So in this competition, I designed to use a deep learning based model to, to tackle the problem. 
So if you have followed cargo in the recent uh, two to three years, you may notice that uh, there are more and more running solutions based on deep learning only and with minimal extra features. Here I try to do a similar thing. The, the only additional features I add to the model is the time of the day. And that's it. I didn't even calculate the uh, simple features such as a uh, moving average of returns and price because I believe a good model should be able to capture them easily. Well, we still have to design the, the input sequence length. Here I trained four models um, with different um, sequence length range from uh, 45 minutes to uh, two hours. So you can imagine some models focus more on short-term behavior and some models focus more on long-term behavior. Um, the cube on the right-hand side shows the, the, the shape of, of the input, which is a 2D data with a time series assets and an asset assets. Um, I also applied a log transform to uh, volume and VWAP features to make them closer to, to Gaussian distribution, um, to, to make the uh, neural neural model um, learns better. Um, since we will use a uh, back propagation to change the, the model, we, we have to normalize our input. So I found that a traditional uh, standardization doesn't work very well with this data because the scale for, for the price and volume are very different for different timestamps and, and assets. For example, from, the, um, from this uh, Bitcoin graph, we can see that the price is well below 20,000 before um, 2021, while the price is well above uh, 30,000 after 2021. So the model won't generalize uh, very well if the um, distribution are so different. To solve this problem here, I try to um, do the standardization locally, which means that uh, if the input sequence is 45 minutes, uh, I will calculate the uh, mean and standard deviation using these uh, 45 data points for each asset. And standardization is done uh, using this uh, mean and standard deviation. In this way, the price will become a relative price and volume will become a relative volume. And this is the, the architecture of, of the model, which is a transformer-based model. So uh, after the model receives the input, there will be a linear layer to extend the, the dimension. Then we, then we add uh, two learnable uh, positional embeddings. One is the time series embedding, and the other one is the asset embedding. Without them, the model has uh, no information on which timestamp and which um, assets does the node com comes from, because this uh, self-attention layer itself does not handle any uh, positional information. After this, I use a I use a SEO attention layers to process this uh, two two dimensional data. I will give more uh, details on the next line. Then then we will have to do the pooling for for uh, time series assets because our output will be will be the target for each asset, which is a one D data. And after pooling, uh, here I add another normal uh, transform encoder layer. And this layer actually is uh, optional, but the uh, computational cost and memory cost is, is very low compared with, with the SEO uh, attention layers because, the, uh, yeah, because we already reduced the data from uh, two-dimensional to one-dimensional. So adding this layer is very cheap. And after all, uh, we have to uh, use a MLP layer to transform the hidden units into our predictions. And here is the detail of, of the SEO uh, attention layer. It comes from a paper called, called SEO Attention in Multi, Multi-Dimensional Transformer in 2019. In the original paper, they use uh, this model for image data. But this uh, model can be also used with any data more than two-dimensional. The idea is quite simple. 
So uh, instead of using using one um, multi head attention, here we use uh, two multi head attention. One is for the time series access, and the other one is for the asset access. And here is the PyTorch code. So the first block here um, is the self attention in the time series access. So each node here is trying to get the information from other timestamp within the same same asset. Well, the second uh, the second block is self attention in the asset access. So this time each node is trying to get the information from other assets within the the same the same timestamp. So in this way, the model can learn the the interaction between different assets, and can also learn the sequential information at the same time without any information loss. Uh, uh, 2D convolution layer is not very suitable here because the order of, of SS ID is just doesn't matter in this data. But you can uh, safely replace the uh, self attention part in the time series SS with uh, either LSTM or, or 1D convolution layer. I tried both, but I found that uh, self attention layer still works better. And for the pooling layer, so so for the pool, pooling layer, I use a so-called uh, MLP pooling, and the idea is kind of similar to MLP mixer. So you can see this as a nonlinear version of weight average pooling. So if we use a linear layer without bias, we are trying to multiply each node in different timestamps by a learnable weight, and then sum all nodes in different timestamps together. Here, I just try to uh, replace the linear layer with a MLP layer. And I found that this uh, works better than the uh, LNM pooling and, and also GEM pooling. Um, for the loss function, so here I try to maximize the, the weight PSN correlation coefficient directly. Of course, it is impossible to compute the weight mean and weight variance for full chain data. So here we will calculate them within the mini batch. So one problem with this loss function is that the scale for, for the model's output is not uh, constrained and could be very different between different models. For example, if you got a prediction with values 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and 0 0.3, it will give the same results as a prediction with values 10, 20, 30, because the mean and standard deviation will be uh, elim eliminated inside the loss function and evaluation function. And this could, could be problematic for ensemble because the models with large scale predictions will dominate the models with uh, small scale predictions. The solution to solve this is to add a uh, batch normalization layer after after the, the the output layer, so that during inference the model's output will be rescaled with uh, rolling mean and rolling standard deviation. And the last part is uh, ensemble, as you can see from the table on the right hand side. So the the correlation for 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 models trained with different sequence length is surprisingly low. Most of them are below 70%. Uh, and this indicates that ensemble will be very effective. For single model performance, uh, a model with a longer se sequence length doesn't always come with a, a better result, but they are still very useful for ensemble because they have a um, very low correlation with the models trained with uh, shorter sequence length. The final ensemble model is just a simple average for uh, 12 models trained with uh, Three-fold uh, cross validation and four different uh, sequence length settings. A single model can get uh, 0 0.0159 in the private leaderboard, which is around a uh, 28th uh, place, while the ensemble model can get a 0 0.0202, uh, which is seventh place. And yeah, that's all of my presentation. Thanks everyone, and feel free to ask me any question.